A very good morning, dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Welcome to this Palm Sunday service. The blessing of the Palm Crosses. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, we pray you, these branches of palm and palm crosses, and grant us as your people outwardly in their bodies do worship you, so inwardly in their souls they may serve you with pure devotion, that they may be victorious over the assaults of the enemy and cleave steadfastly to all good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bless in the name of God the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters His own city to complete His work as our Saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that united with him in his suffering, we may share his risen life. Amen. Would the choir come forward to receive the palm leaves? As for the congregation, palm crosses will be distributed after the Holy Communion.
O Savior of the world, who by your cross and precious blood has redeemed us, Lord Jesus Christ, who as on this day did receive the homage of those who hail you as their king, accept, we pray you, our praise and adoration, our worship and love, and grant that we who now confess you with our lips may never fail to give you the service of our lives for the honour of your holy name, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, the world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Ten Commandments. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Happy are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Hear then these commandments, which God has given to his people, and take them to heart. I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. You shall not make for yourself any idol. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. You shall not dishonor the name of the Lord your God. You shall worship him with oath and reverence. Remember the Lord's day and keep it holy. Christ is risen from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Honor your father and mother. Live as servants of God. Honor all men. Love the people. You shall not commit a murder. Be reconciled to your brothers and sisters. Overcome evil with good. You shall not commit adultery, nor that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You shall not steal. Be honest in all you do and care for those in need. You shall not be a false witness. Let everyone speak the truth. You shall not covered anything which belongs to your neighbor, remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Love your neighbor as yourself, for love is the fulfilling of the law. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. O 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own delivered fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardoned and delivered you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We collect. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, beginning at chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 50, beginning at verse 5 to 9a. The Lord has given me understanding, and I have not rebelled or turned away from him. I bared my back to those who beat me. I did not stop them when they insulted me, when they pulled out the hairs of my beard and spit in my face. But their insults cannot hurt me because the Sovereign Lord gives me help. I brace myself to endure them. I know that I will not be disgraced. For God is near and he will prove me innocent. Does anyone dare bring charges against me? Let us go to court together. Let him bring his accusation. The Sovereign Lord himself defends me. Who then can prove me guilty? All my accusers will disappear. They will vanish like moth-eaten cloth. This is the word of the Lord. Epistle reading is taken, taken from St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews, chapter 5, beginning to read at verse 5. Hebrews, chapter 5, 
beginning to read at verse 5. <clears throat> In the same way, Christ did not take upon himself the honor of being high priest. Instead, God said to him, You are my son. Today, I have become your father. He also said in another place, You will be a priest forever in the priestly order of Melchizedek. In his life on earth, Jesus made his prayer and request with loud cries and tears to God. Who can save him from death? Because, of he, because he was humble and devoted, God heard him. He, but even though he was God's son, he learned through his suffering to be obedient. When he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all those who obeyed him. And God declared him to be high priest in the priestly order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for that great church. reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 11 verse 1 to 11 As they approached Jerusalem near the town of Bethpage and Bethany they came to Mount of Olive Jesus sent two of his disciples on ahead with this instruction, go to the village there ahead of you. As soon as you get there, 
you will find a coat tied up that had never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If someone asks you why you are doing that, tell him that the master needs it and will send it back at once. So they went and found a coat out in the street, tied to the door of a house. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders asked them, What are you doing untying the coat? They answered, Just as Jesus had told them, and the bystanders let them go. They brought the coat to Jesus threw their cloaks over the animal, and Jesus got on. Many people spread their cloak on the road, while others cut branches in the fields and spread them on the road. The people, they, the people who were in front and those who followed behind began to shout, Praise God. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. God bless the coming kingdom of King David, our Father. Praise God. Jesus entered Jerusalem, went into the temple, and looked around at everything. But since it was already late in the day, he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. This is the Gospel of Christ. and uh, wonderful to see a big crowd this morning and uh, each one of us will be receiving a palm cross uh, later on during the Holy Communion and uh, I like to do a reflection or more of a reminder on what this palm cross actually means and uh, indeed uh, at the end of the service, we'll hold it up and say a prayer with this palm cross. Let's understand a bit more of this palm cross so that when we do hold it up later on, we understand deeply what it means. Well, basically, the palm leaf or fronds is a symbol of victory. And uh, maybe it's a kind of a remote understanding for many of us uh, here, but it is a symbol of victory, of triumphant uh, con uh, conquest, at least in Palestine and the Jewish culture. And talking about leaves, i just like to share a little experience which I find intriguing, I find it funny, and uh, this was an experience that I had in uh, New Zealand. And um, at one point in time, a friend of mine, a Maori, he invited me to go and visit a cultural village or a cultural museum of the Maori people in the north of New Zealand, the North Island, in a place called Fangare. And uh, I said, uh, yes, of course I'll join you. Yeah, I want to find a bit more about the Maori culture because I find it there are many similarities between the Maori culture of New Zealand and the Iban people of Sarawak. And as we were coming, approaching the village itself or the open air museum, um, we see the, the traditional meeting house of the Maori people and then the entrance to the village. 
and we're not allowed to just enter in into the village and we all have to crowd around the entrance and uh, there stood in front there was a huge maori warrior yeah and uh, he was holding a club a whalebone club yeah and uh, they were acting out a visit of visitors to the maori village and he says who among you is the leader of this group there were about 30 to 40 tourists there and as i was wondering what was happening my friend pushed me forward and there i was in the middle in front of this huge maori warrior holding his big club in front of me and i was looking up at him because he was over six feet feet and huge i said what do i do I said, my friend whispered go and pick you see the fern in front of you the fern yeah. um Paku. pick it up and give it to him Okay, so I went forward and picked up the fern and passed it uh, to the Maori warrior. And uh, his, stern smile, he turned, his stern face turned into a smile. And he welcomed the whole group in. And I turned to my friend and said, what was that all about? You know? Well, he says, this is the Maori culture in which before you enter, if you're a stranger, they will put a fern in front of you there, and if you do pick the fern and give the fern to them, that is a sign of peace. You have come with peace, not as an enemy, and they will welcome you. So that was an incident relating to ferns. But for me, a fern, paku, is only nice to make sambal, and that's all there is. But then, but for the Maori people, it means beyond that. So it is with symbolism of palm, the palm leaf, the palm fronds. It's a symbol of well, welcoming, a symbol of triumphant conquest, of victory. And it's quite often, as uh, archaeologists find coins dug out in the Palestine and area around Palestine, they find coins from the Roman era. And some of these coins would depict a Roman soldier with a palm tree, and either a woman or a, a child is sitting under the palm tree. And what it means is that the Roman army have conquered that land, and they are submitting to the Roman Empire. So the palm tree is a symbol of conquest, triumphant victory over a foreign land. So there it is. It's not only just for the Jewish people, it is also uh, for the Romans and quite rampant in the ancient Near East at that point in time. So, but today I, I like to go into the gospel reading that we have just heard and understand a bit more about the palm leaves that was waved by the people who are waiting and welcoming the Lord Jesus. Now, that image is not anything new in that sense. Uh, they were welcoming a king like they do, welcoming King David, uh, King Saul, after a conquest of a foreign land. And they were welcoming Jesus as the king into the city of Jerusalem, a conqueror, a king. And um, here we see um, something a bit more mysterious as well in terms of the gospel reading as compared to other occasions when kings would return to Jerusalem victoriously. Well, what are the strange things? The Lord Jesus did not ride a horse, neither did he held a sword in his hands, which is the practice. And the king will raise up the sword and enter the city. But the Lord Jesus rode a young donkey, a foal, a colt, and which has never been ridden before. And yes, that's not really very new or strange. It has happened. And Zechariah, the prophet Zechariah in chapter 9, verse 9, prophesied about this 
because it has happened in the past as well, and the image still sticks, that a king will ride a young donkey and enter Jerusalem. So that image is seen in the past as well. What is more strange is when we turn to the book of Revelations, we also see similar image in Revelations chapter 7, verse 9 to 10, in which the people there, let me read that, as John sees this vision in Revelations. I look and behold a great multitude which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, and peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. He seems to have a future dimension as well. The victorious palm leaf has a future image as well. So, in our understanding, I entitle my sermon as the conquering king this morning. So in our understanding of Jesus as the king is beyond the normal understanding of a king in the world, on earth. He seems to go across time. He is king in the past, he's sovereign in the past, and he will be king in the future. And he should be king today in our lives. So that is one thing that we understand about the Lord Jesus beyond the normal understanding of a king. Number two is that as we know it from Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, present nor future, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. One thing more that the Lord Jesus has over other kings. He is the king of the living and the dead, as the book of Romans mentioned to us this morning. So he has control over not just material things, he has control and reigns over both the physical and the spiritual world. And thirdly, the Lord is beyond the reign of the Lord Jesus is beyond boundaries. As we know, we know that uh, King of Sweden, King of England, has got a boundary that he reigns in. But this king does not have boundary. He cuts across spaces. He cuts across spaces in our lives, spaces in our hearts, meaning he can be king over our lives, he can be king in our hearts. So that's the understanding of Jesus as the conquering king. And this is an important point because it helps us in this next part of what I will share with you. And this is something which is very dear and very close to every one of us. And we must understand the concept of the Lord Jesus as being king the conquering king over the past and the present, over the physical and the spiritual, over space. Because he needs to be king over our lives today. He needs to reign. And I will use the word conquering king here, victorious king, because we normally use it in a term or a phrase to conquer our fears. Fears, penangi hati, ketakutan dalam kehidupan kita. It helps us to conquer our fears. Psychologist talks about three key fears in our lives. And what are those three key fears? Well, number one, says the psychologist, is the fear of being alone. The fear of isolation. Nobody wants to be alone. Parents fear the day that their children will leave the nest and they will be alone as such. Spouses, husbands and wives fear the day that their loved one will leave them to the afterlife. 
So the fear goes on and on to be alone. Nobody wants to be alone. And that's one of the greatest fear. We don't want to be rejected as well. The fear of rejection. Palm Sunday and Good Friday tells us that the Lord Jesus endured all kinds of isolation and rejection alone because he suffered alone on the way to the cross. And he understood that. And because he occupies spaces in our lives and in our hearts, he is able to be that wonderful companion in our lives. Amen? We should not be alone. We should not fear isolation. And COVID-19 tells us the death of that isolation. And much who suffer are the senior citizen, as I observe, during the last pandemic. That's the fear of isolation, the fear of rejection. What's the next fear? The next fear is the fear of the unknown not knowing what will happen in the future. We all do have this fear. COVID-19 accentuates, brings forth more of this fear. The unknown, what is known to us, gradually becomes unknown. The weather is unpredictable because of global warming. Time when it should be hot and dry, it's wet. Time when it's wet is very dry and dusty. And we do experience that. COVID-19 tells us and puts the world around us upside down. Students would love to have their holidays in November and December. The term, I've lost count. I, I don't know when the holidays are. I have to ask the students at time, is it March? Is it February? And the teachers struggle to bring back the curriculum. Hopefully, by two years' time, we have, it comes back to normal. A businessman understands the dynamics of an economic that is in turmoil and trying to understand more of how our financial system can cope with the current uncertainty. A politician understands the difficulty to manage communities, people with so much changes in the political environment. And the Lord Jesus says, yes, he is the Lord of the past and the Lord of the present and the Lord of the future. He is the Lord of the unknown. And if we only allow him to lead the way, he will show us the way. And, of course, the fear of death, which really grips a lot of people. And here, one year ago, I blessed the marriage of two young couples very close to me. Two weeks ago, the bridegroom died suddenly, came back home and dropped dead. I am I'm greatly saddened by this passing on because it's quite close to me. He would come and visit me and bring vegetables from a nearby village. But such a sudden thing, I haven't got any children yet. But death is such a sudden thing that can take place in our lives. And we need to be aware and be ready when it does come. So, one in closing, I just like to help us to remind ourselves as well that the Lord Jesus, with this simple palm leaf, reminds us that he has conquered sin, death, and Satan. But he has also provided us the key to open the freedom from fear. And that is wonderfully laid out in this beautiful Psalms, in Psalms 23. Let me read Psalms 23, and I'm sure you are very familiar with this. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk through the, the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You see, it provides us the three keys to overcome these three fears. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Whatever unknown we have, the Lord Jesus guides us. Even though I walk to the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because the Lord has overcome death through his death and resurrection. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Whoever rejects you or people you consider to be your enemy, remember the presence of the Lord will cause them to be envious in your life. Your enemies are not your real enemies. So let us reflect on this wonderful cross that we have here and be reminded of this fact that we need this key to conquer our fears, the fears in our life. So, so brothers and sisters in Christ, as we hold up this cross afterwards, remember Christ, if we make him king and lord of our lives, to occupy the small corners and spaces in our lives, the nooks and corners of our lives, we will be victorious over all things. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks unto you for your loving kindness, your goodness, and your love, O Lord Father. And we pray as we hold up the palm cross this morning, we are reminded that we are victorious because you are victorious and you reign over our hearts, over our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shall we all rise for the Nicene Creed? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for notices. A very good morning, dear sisters and brothers in Christ. Once again, we welcome everyone to the house of God for this Palm Sunday service. Today marks the beginning of the Passion Week. If we were to refer to the Pew Bulletin today, there are a series of services throughout the week, starting Monday all the way to Easter. So please, please take note of the time. I would like to take this opportunity also to thank those uh, parishioners who gathered together at the parish hall yesterday to make the palm crosses. There are nearly 200 of them gathered for the fellowship for making palm crosses. They spent nearly seven hours doing the 9,000 palm crosses. We give thanks to God. <clears throat> My dear friends, palm crosses serves as a reminder for the love of Christ and for the victorious that he won later on. It is not a magic tool to chase away evil or whatever. You may place the palm crosses in your Bible, or above the, the, your bed, or somewhere that's prominent. It serves as a reminder what 
God, through His Son, Jesus Christ, has done for us. So it serves as a reminder and reminder only. Okay? The children's sun, children Sunday school is having their party next week, Easter party, at the parish hall. So please uh, take note that the closing date for the registration is on the 26th of March. That is coming Tuesday. The other one is um, the ISC, Iban Speaking Congregation, is, hold, is having their mini fundraising sale uh, to raise funds for the church activities. Please support them after the service at the open space between the parish centre and the cathedral. Now with this, shall we all kneel for the intercession? The psalmist says in Psalm 50, 51 verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Let us quieten our hearts as we bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Christ who gave himself for the life of the world. Almighty God, grant us the faith to know Jesus as the true and humble King, hailed by the crowd as the Messiah, that we may be found beside him on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Strengthen with your divine wisdom, Darnell, our bishop, Andrew, the assistant bishop, Song Ming, our Dean, and in our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parish of St. Giles, Batunia, her priest in charge, Reverend Christopher Ajis Bo, and chapels, St. Paul's, St. Francis, St. Mary's, St. Andrew's, and empower all in the service of Christ give to all believers a deep longing to take up the cross and to understand its mysterious glory. Bless those who lead the church's worship at this solemn time. In the preaching of your word and the celebration of the sacraments, draw your people close to you. Lord, in your mercy, Bestow your blessings on Anthony Anatseda, Chris Manuel Jackson Randa, Kumar Karisti, and Johnson Lapo, Lambong Abang, Nicole Charles, Timothy Lanchang, as they prepare themselves for their ordination to the diaconate. Brandon Loran, Danielson Ritchie, Vinyl Lickerson Gota, Martin Dennis, Marcos Mark Luna, Jeffrey Munak, and Ronio Joseph Buncho, as they prepare for their ordination to priesthood on the 6th of April at the Church of Good Shepherd Lutong Miri. Grant them the needful gifts of your grace that they may become faithful servants to proclaim your word through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, protect the world which you came to save and guide the nations of the world for the Federation of Malaysia and the state Sarawak. Strengthen those whose work to share the reconciliation worn at such a cost upon the cross, that people may be led to honor one another and seek the common good. O Holy One, we know that the violence between your children is not according to your will. 
and we pray that you will help and guide the Israeli and the Palestinian peoples to bring the current warfare to an end. We pray for open hearts, for all sides to listen and work for peace. We pray for a change of heart for everyone involved in this struggle, that they will realize that solutions to this conflict are to be found in negotiations and not weapons. We ask also for safety for our fellow Christians in the Holy Land, that they may continue to serve as living representatives of your Son, in the land of his earthly birth. We ask all this in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, fill our homes with joy and peace. Keep all whom we love safe under your divine protection and grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Lord, in your mercy, heal those who are suffering in sickness and distress, especially for Reverend Ralph Rapu Sigat, Wendy Anak Sidis, Bong Buan Chin, and Christina Durek, and for Margaret Lee, Christina Lee, Noel Chan Chi Chow, Esther Indut Luat, and Kenneth Sirai, who are sick at home, help the lonely and the betrayed, the suffering and the dying for caregivers, for patience and love as they undertake the task to care for those under their care, to seek strength in the companionship of Jesus and in his passion to know their salvation. Lord, in your mercy, welcome into paradise all who have left his world in your friendship especially for Licha Anat Riod, Ursula Martha England, Esa Anat Kame, Agnes Ong, Timothy Isao Anat Indit, John Dublin Sijo, Hera Anat Unga, Marjorie Chong Oi Chin, and Brownie Anak Michael Abunawas, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. According to your promises, bring them to, with all your says to share in all the sure benefits of Christ's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, In communion with all those who have walked in the holy way, we rejoice in the fellowship of St. Thomas, the Apostle, our patron, and all your saints. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray unto your unfailing love. Together we say, Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake, for the of, sake your of your Son, son. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Prayer of Humble Excess Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, 
that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Shall we all rise? Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let us present our offering to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you.
The Lord is here. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving Him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and make us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, Maybe to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this out of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy upon us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and fit on him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving. Holy Communion, also be served at the Nartex.
Let us pray. The post communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Shall we all rise? Let us lift up our palm crosses and the palm leaves. Leave it on high. God, our Savior, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us a sign of His victory, and grant that we who bear them in His name may ever hail Him as our King and follow Him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Christ crucified draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground of faith, a firm su support for hope and the assurance of sins forgiven and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Remain standing for the recession of hymn.